If you've watched some of my recent videos, then you've probably seen that I built a water-cooled Raspberry Pi 4 a couple of weeks ago. It came out looking better than I expected, and the cooling system performed really well too. This was obviously a crazy overkill for a single Raspberry Pi, but it isn't actually why I bought the water cooling kit. I bought it along with 7 other Raspberry Pis, so that I could try building my own water-cooled Pi cluster. While water cooling a single Raspberry Pi doesn't make too much sense, water cooling a whole cluster is a bit more practical. The water cooling system is much quieter than having 8 small fans all screaming in unison. It works really well to keep the pies cool, and it actually costs a bit less than some other cooling solutions, given that I'd have to buy 8 of them. For those of you who don't know what a pie cluster is, it's essentially a set of 2 or more Raspberry Pis which are connected together on a local network, and work together to perform computing tasks by sharing the load. There's usually one Pi which is designated as the host or master node, and is in charge of breaking up the task into smaller tasks, and sending these out to all the other nodes to work on. The master node then compiles all the completed tasks back into a final result. To build my cluster I got together 8 Raspberry Pis, a network switch, a USB power supply, and then the water cooling kit, cooling blocks, and a bunch of network cables, USB-C cables, standoffs and screws to put it all together. I started off by making 8 acrylic brackets to hold the cooling blocks in position over each Pi's CPU. These are the same design as the ones used in my previous video, but are now red to suit the cables and fan. Each bracket consists of two parts which are glued together to hold the cooling block in place. I also had to include a spacer to lift the cooling block a bit higher off the CPU, so that it clears the surrounding components, otherwise I'd have to remove the display connector from all 8 Raspberry Pis. The cooling block mounts onto the Pi by securing the Pi between some red standoffs which will screw into the base, and some nylon standoffs for the cooling block to screw into. The bracket picks up on the holes in the standoffs and clamps the cooling block down onto the Pi CPU. I then repeated this 7 more times for the other Pi's. The traditional way to build a Pi cluster is to place standoffs on each Pi and then mount them on top of each other to form a stack. This is the easiest and most compact way to assemble them, but doesn't really work that well with my cooling block bracket and isn't all that eye-catching. This got me thinking of a way to better lay out the cluster so that the cooling water circuit was clearly visible and the cluster was both functional and eye-catching. Even better would be if it could be mounted onto a wall. I played around with a couple of layout options, considering the placement of the components to minimize cable and tube lengths, and trying to maintain some symmetry to keep it looking neat. I settled for having four pies on each side of the radiator, keeping the large fan as the focal point of the design. I'd be connecting the pies to the switch using some red patch leads, and I bought a high power USB charging hub and some short USB-C cables to power the pies. Once I had my layout in mind, I started marking out my backboard. I positioned all of the major components onto a piece of MDF, and then marked out where they'd be placed and the holes needed to mount them. I checked the clearances required for the cables, and then planned the cooling water tube layout. It was at this point that I realised that having four pies arranged in a square would result in an unnecessarily complex water cooling loop, so I switched to having the four pies in a straight line on each side. I also had to make a decision on how best to run the cooling water loop. If I put each Pi in series, then the first will be the coolest in the loop, and each will get progressively warmer, with the last one running the warmest. If I put the Pi's in parallel, then they'll all receive the same temperature water, but balancing the flow rate becomes a problem. It's quite likely that one or two which are the furthest away would receive little to no flow through them. I decided that warm water was better than no water, and I didn't want to buy 8 valves to try and balance the flow rate between them, so I set out connecting them in series. I also had a gap at the top where there was a lot of free space, so I decided to pull out an old touch panel which I'd used on a previous project. Having a display for the master node meant that I'd have a way to monitor the system, and even display stats, graphs or diagnostics directly on the cluster. 
I finished marking out the layout and then cut the board to size using a Dremel. To mount the Raspberry Pis, I decided to design and laser cut a small acrylic base. This would add a red accent and guide the power cable through to the back. I also designed a couple of cable and tube management stands. I then marked out the positions for all the mounting holes and drilled them out. I decided to add some wooden sections to the back of the board to stiffen it and to create an area behind the board for the cable management and power supply. I also made holes underneath the acrylic bases for the USB cables to run through. I then sprayed the front and the back of the board black. I mounted the pies, the network switch and the cooling water components. The last thing to add was the display, which I mounted onto an acrylic face panel with some acrylic side supports to hold it. You'll notice that I had to mount the master node a bit lower than the others, so that I could get the HDMI cable in without clashing with the Pi next to it. I tied up all of the cables at the back of the cluster, using some cable ties and cable holders which I cut out of the acrylic and glued into place. As a final touch, I added an RGB LED strip onto the back, to create some accent lighting on the wall behind it. With that all done, I just needed to fill the cooling water circuit with water and hope that I didn't drown one of the pies. Luckily, there were no major leaks. There was one slow leak on the inlet to the first cooling block, probably because of the twist and pressure on the tube to get to the radiator. I clamped the tube with a small cable tie and the leak stopped. All the cooling water loop needed now was some colour. I prepared a copy of Raspberry Pi OS Lite on 7 micro SD cards and a copy of Raspberry Pi OS on the 8th for the master node. I could then power up the cluster and check that they all booted up. The system was initially quite noisy as the air bubbles worked their way out of the cooling water loop, but it eventually settled down. The display is a nice way to visualize stats for the cluster. Here I'm just running the script I used previously to display the CPU temperature of the master node. I'm not going to get into the software side of the cluster in this video, as there are a number of options depending on what you'd like to do with it and how experienced you are with network computing, but I'll be sure to cover that in a future video, so make sure that you subscribe to follow my future projects.
I hope you've enjoyed following this build with me. Please leave a like if you did and turn on notifications to follow my future projects.